Hello and welcome to the Literary Lair. My brain is weird. For example, I can remember pointless pop culture minutia that has no bearing on real life, but sometimes I can't remember what I had for dinner the previous night. I think it was Chinese, but I'm not sure. And sometimes I'm sitting around thinking that I couldn't possibly start work on a video because it would take a really long time to compile everything that I would need for it, and I need something quick and simple that I can write a script for within a week and then film it so I can release something in September. And then I decide, well, you know what, let me just start working on the video and, you know, see where it takes me. Maybe I can, you know, expedite it somehow. And I find a whole folder with a plethora of vintage book advertisements that I downloaded ages ago, apparently, and forgot about. Thanks, past me. So that's what we're doing this week. Vintage Book Advertisements 2, The New Backs, the long-awaited sequel, or at least I've been long-awaiting it because the first Vintage Book Advertisements video was a lot of fun to do. Will we have anything as crazy as how to pick up girls? Probably not, but... Let's see what we've got anyway. Roll theme song. Our first advertisement brings us to 1921, and is an ad for the pulp magazine Adventure. Seems nice enough, as long as no one in the ad asks about what time it is. You killed him yourself. You were in Pollard's office with that girl. You, this money, Pollard's confession. I resent that accusation you're making, and furthermore, you could have no way of knowing what happened in that office that night, because I know for a fact that I was alone there. Damn you, Columbo. Read this Gordon Young masterpiece, Bluffed, a complete novel, and the other thrilling He-Man stories, novelettes, and serials by Arthur O. Friel, H. Bedford Jones, and W.C. Tuttle. Huh, looks like he had quite a career after he left the military. Although, I have to say that this ad confuses me a little bit. I mean, I don't remember stories about gamblers and politicians ever happening in the old Masters of the Universe cartoon. Clearly, this is yet another example of them ruining our childhoods by changing the classic stories that we grew up with that existed solely to sell toys. A glass of wine with the Borgias. Uh, no thanks. They're the poisoning ones, right? Plus, I don't like the way that guy on the right is staring at me. Thankfully, however, this ad is just for a collection of Alexander Dumas books that feature the Borgias and not actually offering, like, the opportunity to have dinner with the Borgias. Because of the whole poisoning thing, I assume, and not because of the logistics of time travel or necromancy being difficult to pull off in 1924. Although, I do think it's pretty weird to think of an age where you could send away for a set of books, decide you didn't want them, and send them back without having at least paid full price and doing a return. But with an eight-volume set, I don't know if five days is necessarily long enough. I mean, I'm a fast reader, but a book a day is usually as fast as I can go. Then again, I guess if you don't like it by the third volume, I don't think you'll care for the final one. This holiday season, give the people you love more to read than just a card. Give them a book. And at B. Dalton, there are a lot of books to choose from. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of B. Dalton books, but I certainly haven't. But it was a bookstore that eventually got bought out by Barnes & Noble in the late 80s. And what's interesting about them is that back in the day, they had actual TV commercials. Like, I've never really seen that nowadays, advertising for bookstores, but they used to. And this one actually had a mascot of sorts, B. Dalton. He's this nerdy guy in a bow tie and glasses and suspenders. He looks like a total dork. And what I find kind of funny is how they advertised. Like this one, for example, which is showcasing two of the most different books ever. Like the 1988 Elias Baseball Analyst, it's the ultimate in official statistics for fans of America's favorite game. Then there are books you read because they're important to our lives. Like Final Warning. 
an eyewitness account of Chernobyl from the heroic American doctor who went there to help. If you read those two back to back, your head explodes from the mood whiplash. But that's not the only one. They also have one that features an appearance from famous author Tom Clancy. Critics have called Tom Clancy's novels compelling, spine-tingling, and breathlessly exciting, and his latest book, The Cardinal of the Kremlin, is no exception. I don't know if you guys remember, but I tried to review The Hunt for Red October a while back, and it was just so dense and boring that I couldn't make it halfway through. So I guess don't call me a critic, because those aren't the words I'd use to describe Clancy's writing. Sounds compelling, spine-tingling, and breathlessly exciting to me, Tom. Everybody's a critic. But while that's subjective, and I don't begrudge anyone who does enjoy Clancy's writing, it just isn't for me, this ad is a little confusing because the adage, everyone's a critic, is usually used in the pejorative sense, so their attempt to reclaim it for use in a positive situation doesn't quite hold up. You can call me books. Next to my software, nothing's more user-friendly than the Wall Street Journal. William H. Gates III, Chairman, Microsoft Corporation. My god, do you know what this means? We were wrong! Bill Gates didn't put a microchip meant to track our movements into the vaccine. He put it in the Wall Street Journal decades ago. Quickly, everyone stop reading the Wall Street Journal until we find the chips. Mark Twain's new work, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer's Comrade. Huh? I never knew Huckleberry Finn was a communist. Appears February 18th, prospectuses now ready. There's books in them there, Hills. I kid, I kid, I know that a prospectus is a printed document that describes or advertises a forthcoming book. Or at least I learned that when I had to Google the word while writing this video. But did you know that? Don't lie, you didn't know the word either. Although given Twain's reputation as one of the greatest writers of all time, it is strange to essentially see an ad for a book that everyone nowadays knows about even if they've never read it. What sort of man reads Playboy? Well, I'm certainly sure that uh, I wouldn't know, and even if I did, I would only read it for the articles. It's a little weird to see a Playboy ad, which I admit I'm kind of stretching to consider it to be book-related, but it stood out to me mainly because of the text of the ad. A man who goes out of his way to find that special place, perhaps it's a sun-splashed cove where the water is always great, and having fun isn't a lot of work. Fact. More than half of the men, 18 to 34, who took eight or more air trips in the past year read Playboy. I think this is a classic example of correlation is not causation, because I imagine that a lot of the men who read Playboy last year didn't get any farther than their bedrooms or bathrooms, if you catch my drift. Whoa, whoa, I was talking about the pandemic. Get your minds out of the gutters. The literary lair will return, but first, a word from our sponsor. I'm watching the newest video from my favorite content creator, and it's so great it makes me want to support their work. But it's so gosh darn hard to figure out how. Did I hear you say you want to help support your favorite content creator? You sure did, but I don't know how to. I mean, I've tried throwing my money at the screen, but nothing happens. That's because you're doing it wrong, idiot. Then what am I supposed to do? Simple. You go to patreon.com slash blackscarabfilms and click to become a patron today. Wow, that is simple, and I just give them money for nothing in return? Of course not, dummy. From the lowest $1 level, there are rewards that you can get in exchange for your patronage, like seeing videos a full day earlier than anyone else, and they go up from there. At higher reward levels, you can get your name in the credits, and even request reviews of specific material of your choosing. Golly gee willikers, that sounds great! So, if I'm able to afford it, what's that URL again? The link again is patreon.com slash blackscarabfilms. Gee, thanks! I'm gonna become a patron right now! Popular magic. Yeah, I don't know about that. None of the people I knew in high school who did magic were popular. Like, no offense, but they were friends with me, so they weren't popular. Step into the limelight. Surprise your friends with a mastery of mystery. Be the popular man in your circle of friends. You can entertain them and hold their attention with a thousand surprises and novelties. Eh, I don't know. I think after the first 400, the novelty might wear off. But I mean, it looks like a great deal. I mean, it's only 50 cents and you get 116 pages, 500 illustrations, and it includes all kinds of stuff like card tricks, dice tricks, max tricks, spirit tricks, all kinds of magic magic tricks. 
illusion, Michael. Mm. The trick is something a whore does for money. And it was compiled by the staff of Professor Dunninger, the man who apparently mystified four presidents, in addition to the only man to voluntarily abdicate the British throne. You know, they always skip over that in the history documentaries, but that was a major factor in all their administrations. That's why Harry Potter is banned in schools, because magicians made our presidents look like fools. One last thing, it says that it was compiled from the Great Magazine, which is rather egotistical, but the magazine's title is the important thing, Science and Invention. Which is pretty interesting because if Clark's law holds true, that means that all of these tricks are just sufficiently advanced science. Although I figure that the name Popular Science was probably already taken. And since I mentioned one of their former competitors, it's only fair that we take a look at an ad from Barnes & Noble. And see if you can spot a subtle similarity to another classic ad campaign. Do you have any books for early readers? Sorry, have you tried Barnes & Noble? Barnes & Noble, of course, of course. Can anyone else go for a V8 right now? Do they even still make V8? I don't think I've seen an ad for one in like 10 years. Do you have any books on electrical wiring? Sorry, have you tried Barnes & Noble? Barnes & Noble. Of course. Of course. A bookstore is a store, of course, of course, and they hired the writers for a horse, of course, because their slogan sounds a lot like the theme song to the famous Mr. Ed. The eager reader tries the coupon. A perfectly good He-Man. Jeez, what is it with the 20s and the term He-Man? I feel like I'm watching the Little Rascals. Anyway, a perfectly good He-Man with red blood and everything owned a perfectly good book, but set out to buy another book. Don't do it, it's a trap. It starts with one book, and then another, and another, and then you need one shelf, and then two, and eventually you're drowning in the books. The first thing he did was to read all the literary reviews. Poor dear man, so many critics, so many advertisements, so many biggest books of the year, so many great works of art. Whom to believe? Critics even, and they're right, they're stupid. He gave up, but he got ashamed at the next party. He must be up on the new things. And so that red-blooded He-Man did the only thing he could. He hired someone to read all the newest books for him and summarize them in a succinct fashion, keeping all the subtext and analysis for him to use at parties. And that man was Cliff Notes. Actually, if this was an ad for the earliest Cliff Notes, that would be pretty cool. But instead, it's an ad for the Literary Guild of America, a service that provides their subscribers with the best books at half the price and has the most melodramatic ad copy I think I've ever seen. But suddenly, our hero sees the light. He is rescued, and by whom? By whom but the knight in modern clothes, the Literary Guild of America. Listen, I'm sure you have a fine service and all, but you can't go around saying stuff that makes you sound like the Justice Society of America. You sell books. You don't fight per degaton. It has frightened many people by sawing the price of books almost in half. And now I, the Literary Guild of America, will saw this book price in half. Subscribers with difficulty restrain their tears at saving so much money. Listen, I can appreciate a deal, don't get me wrong, but I don't think I've ever cried because a book was slightly less expensive than usual. And this is pre-Great Depression, so what's the deal? And then the book is petted and pampered with margins and an especially nice binding, and is delivered to you on the day of publication. Not a month late, you understand, but on the date of publication. I think I've gotten emails that sound like this from t-shirt companies. And by far my favorite. The second picture is you, all spread abroad in your easy chair, lazily unwrapping a new package. And then you drink in culture and joy and everything, without moving from that easy chair. Later you ring for your butler and tell him to lay the right book where all the guests will see that you are of the elect and belong to the literary guild. And you repeat the drama once a month. So joining this service will get me a butler? Sign me up. Why children don't obey. I would say that it probably has something to do with the fact that you put him in that outfit with that haircut. New methods for old. Until now, scolding and whipping seem to have been about the parents' only methods. But new methods have been discovered which will make it easy to train children to obey promptly. Pleasantly and surely without breaking the child's will, without creating fear, resentment, or revenge in the child's heart, as whipping does. You know, I was going to joke that because it's from 1923, the book was just going to say, beat your kids. But, uh, apparently there were people against that all the way back in the 20s. So, uh, that's interesting.
I'd actually be interested in seeing this book because it seems to actually have some really good ideas. I mean, listen to the highlights. Do you know how to instruct children in the delicate matter of sex? To teach children to instantly comply with command, don't touch? To suppress temper in children without punishment? Unfortunately, based on history, I don't think many people actually read this book since we're still debating the efficacy of whipping and scolding today. Their methods might be pretty kid-friendly, but I still think that kid's just acting out because of the haircut. The book that brings radio into the home. Okay, so we knew that video killed the radio star, but I had no idea that the book star was killed by radio. For the first time, a book is published at a small price that gives the public all that it should know about radio. For example, radio is totally a fad that's gonna die out and families will go back to talking to each other during dinner instead of sitting at their radios. What the book contains. Section 1. How Radio Enters the Home. Much like vampires and sinks, you have to invite radio into your home. Section 2. How to receive most efficiently. Section 3. Vacuum tube transmission for the amateur and experimenter. Section 4. General information. A veritable guidebook to radio. Jeez, there's so much info in this book that it's enough to drive you radio gaga. Eh? Eh? I'm sorry, that joke was terrible. I'll escort myself out. Do animals obey the laws of Moses? Well, considering that one of the big ones is thou shalt not kill and most animals need to kill in order to survive, I'm gonna go with no. And you try convincing a grizzly bear to keep the Sabbath holy. So apparently the entire crux of this ad is that animals allegedly instinctively recognize and live by the principles of conduct which Moses expressed in the Ten Commandments, which is laughable on its own, but it goes on to claim that it proves the creationism myth, which is ridiculous. Everyone knows that animals worship Satan. Who else has horns, hooves, and tails? Animals! It makes total sense! Also, the guy who wrote the book, Ernest Thompson Seton, was also one of the founders of the Boy Scouts, so write your own joke for that one. So you guys know about product placement, right? Well, way back in the early days of advertising on TV, they didn't just advertise the products in the background with the characters cracking open a bottle of Coca-Cola or using a Gillette brand razor. Sometimes the commercial was integrated in as part of the show, like this one from the classic sitcom Make Room for Daddy. Then a hundred voice choral group sings. Most any cereal is fine with me. As long as you spell it P O S T. If you want to prove it to yourselves, folks, try Post Toasties. I know you'll love them. But if you think that was bad, you haven't seen anything yet. See if you can spot the ad in this clip from the classic Groucho Marx series, You Bet Your Life. Welcome to the Groucho Show. Say the secret word and. <laughs> Seamless, right? Obviously this is a stretch, since it's not really a commercial, since it was a clip from the show and it was just Harper promoting the book, but I've gotten demands for more Marx Brothers content, so maybe this will tide you guys over until the next Marxist propaganda drops. And really, what more of a glowing endorsement can you get for a book than a testimonial from the author's own brother? Cause family tells it like it is. This video sucks! Eat me! He's kidding. <laughs> he, he's kidding. I don't see how he's going to make any money on that book if he keeps giving him away. And I think it's an old rule of showbiz to never try to one-up Groucho Marx, so that's where we're going to stop it for today. But I had a lot of fun looking at these advertisements, and I hope you had as much fun watching me cracking jokes as I had writing them. Until next time, you've been watching B Scarab Films, but you can call me books. Nah, that's still a stupid tagline. See you next time.
he's this nerdy. Oh, right. I mean, I could. It's not that difficult to pull this off, brush my hair back a little bit, put my glasses on. <laughs> 